Welcome back to Biology 2225L, AMP2 lab at CNM. The topic for this week is the female reproductive system. This is the model video and I have two models to show you today. The first one we're going to start with is an overall model of the female or reproductive system. Uh, some of the more superficial features have been removed as you can see in this model, but we can see many of the structures that are on our list of terms. Uh, the first thing you want to notice is that this is the anterior view of the model right here. This is the symphysis pubis between the two pubic bones, just to give you an orientation of to where we are. <clears throat> and so if this was a complete model, we would have a mons pubis, uh, a, a mound of fatty tissue covering the um, symphysis pubis, and that would be part of the external genitalia that then leads posteriorly to the labia, the labia are the, again, folds of tissue. The external thicker folds that uh, do have hair on it, like the mons pubis does, are called the labia majora. Each one is a labium magus. And then within the labia majora are two smaller, thinner folds that do not bear hair follicles. These are the labia minora, each one a labium minus. Within the confines of the labia minora is an area referred to as the vestibule and the vestibule is where you'll find the urethral orifice for the urinary system and the vaginal orifice for the reproductive system. Uh, posterior to all of this structure is the anal orifice, the opening of the digestive system. Now before we um, separate this model and take a look at a sagittal view, I want to turn it around and get an internal view from above. So this would be a, a, a looking uh, at it from above, peering down into the pelvic cavity, basically. And what you see when you look down from above, again, is a, a symphysis pubis up front, uh, that pad of fiber cartilage between the pubic bones, then the, the body wall itself, and then some of the organs in the female pelvis. We have the urinary bladder up front here. Remember the uterus, shown in pinkish here, sits behind the urinary bladder. And so this, again, top portion of the uterus, this dome-shaped top portion of the uterus would be the fundus, and then the rest of it leading down would be the body. At the very bottom, we would see a cervix, but we can't see that on this particular, uh, from this particular view. Uh, we can also see inside the pelvic cavity the ovary itself, little almond-shaped organ, that's the ovary. There's one on each side, of course. Uh, the ovary, recall, is connected to the uterus through the ovarian ligament. So there we see the ovarian ligament connecting the ovary to the uterus. Uh, we also have a tube coming out of the uterus on each side known as the uterine tube. This is a hollow tube that leads out to the tip of the ovary and terminates as a funnel-shaped infundibulum with finger-like projections on it known as fimbriae, the fimbriae. Uh, of course the function here is to pick up a secondary oocyte that's ovulated from the ovary, draw it in, and carry the oocyte towards the uterus. And remember it's uh, the uterine tube is lined with simple columnar epithelium and they are ciliated cells and so the cilia help um, create a current that draws the egg in and sends it over to the uterus. <clears throat> the uterus is held in place primarily through a broad sheet of connective tissue here called the broad ligament. The broad ligament. And so two ligaments that we can clearly see on this model are the ovarian ligament again and the broad ligament. What we can't see very clearly are the suspensory ligament. A suspensory ligament would sit just about where the pipe cleaner is right here and it would head out and anchor and hold the ovary away from the body of the uterus, uh, suspend the ovary out in the pelvic cavity, in other words. And we don't really see a clear representation of the round ligament, which is supposed to come off the uh, uterus, sidewall of the uterus, and head down towards the inguinal canal. They do show us some blood vessels and some of the other ligaments that hold things in place, but in terms of what's on our list of terms, we can only see the broad sheet-like broad ligament and the ovarian ligament. Now we can see more if we pop this model open and take a look at a, at a uh, 
sagittal view of the system. So here we see a sagittal view of the, again, female reproductive system. And I'm going to hold it this way, essentially, just to orient you to what we're looking at here. We have on this side, again, is anterior now. This side is posterior. So once again, we have the symphysis pubis in this location up front. Just behind it is the urinary bladder. Above and behind the bladder is the uterus. And then, of course, back here would be the end of the rectum leading into the anal canal and out the anal orifice. So from this perspective, if we move in closer, we can start up at the, at the uh, uterus itself. Again, we would have the, f the, uh, the fundus of the uterus right here, the fundus, and then this would be the body of the uterus. And if we follow it all the way down, we see at the bottom of the uterus is a structure known as the cervix, which is another dome-shaped structure, but the, it's, it appears to be a dome that is pointing down into the vaginal canal. If we focus on this very closely, we can see the layers of the wall of the uterus. This is all endometrium, and again, the endometrial lining varies in thickness, depending on where we're at in the menstrual cycle. The smooth muscle is referred to as the myometrium, and then on the outside we have a fibrous perimetrium. So we should be able to clearly identify those three layers in the wall of the uterus. Again, um, during birth, the fetus is delivered from the uterus through the cervical canal, which dilates to uh, allow delivery and passes through the vaginal canal. The vaginal canal usually has a rough appearance like this with little ridges on the side wall and it terminates as a vaginal orifice. Remember we have a fornix, a, a lateral fornix that projects up uh, along the side of the cervix. Down at the bottom of the vaginal canal there may be a sheet of mucous membrane that somewhat uh, covers the opening of the vaginal canal and that is referred to as the hymen. But as I said in the in the PowerPoint video that's rarely an intact membrane. There's usually some kind of natural opening in the hymen to allow for that first menstrual uh, period. What is not shown here is Bartholin's gland or the so-called greater vestibular gland. That would be located somewhere in this region down here. And again, it would produce mucus and lubricant to the vestibule area. Um, as far as external genitalia go, we can see the two labia here again from a different perspective. The uh, lower outermost one would be the lab labium magus, and the thinner, uh, smaller, more internal one would be the labium minus. Remember the labia minora, the two labia minora come together and at their anterior uh, uh, fusion form a flap of skin or a hood of skin that covers the clitoris. The clitoris is this mass of erectile tissue somewhat reminiscent of the penis in the male. Um, and so the hood that covers it is formed by the labia minora, as you can see, and that's referred to as the prepuce of the clitoris. So I believe that's uh, the, what we can see on the female model, and we've got many of the named structures, but of course not, not all of them. The other model that we have to look at is a enlarged model of the ovary itself. So here we see the, the ovary, and we'll have to zoom out a little bit. It's a good sized model. That's, uh, I'm zoomed out all the way. Um, so you see again an almond-shaped uh, structure with an ovarian ligament uh, again holding it in place and a suspensory ligament uh, with blood vessels leading out the other the other side. What this, uh, what this ovary model is attempting to show is primarily follicles in different stages of development. Um, and so if we zoom in, even though it's difficult to see, the tiniest of the follicles that we can see here are intended to be the primordial follicles, the smallest follicles with a, a simple squamous epithelium surrounding them. Then on another part of the model they show us um, follicles in different stages of development 
of course, uh, primordial follicles would develop into primary follicles, which start with a single layer of simple cuboidal epithelium around them. And then as those primary follicles grow, they will get larger and uh, usually develop additional layers of epithelium. So these are all primary follicles in different stages of development. Eventually we get to a secondary follicle that has a uh, at least a small bit of fluid filled chamber inside it and unfortunately this model doesn't show a secondary follicle. This model actually also doesn't show a vesicular or graphene follicle. A vesicular or graphene follicle would have a large C-shaped antrum, fluid filled antrum, and uh, 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 the secondary oocyte uh, just before ovulation protruding into it. What they do show us though is a, an ovulation event occurring. Uh, remember what we said from the lecture that it initiates as something called a stigma, a nipple-like protrusion through the wall of the ovary. There uh, uh, we have the secondary oocyte in that little bud of tissue that's going to be ovulated eventually. Um, and this, again, has broken off from its stalk-like attachment in the vesicular follicle, which is not shown. Following ovulation, which we see up here, following ovulation, uh, the vesicular follicle bleeds and undergoes a repair process, fills with blood vessels, and some tissues are converted to glandular tissue, and it accumulates some lipid, some yellow lipid, and it eventually becomes what we call the corpus luteum, shown in yellow here. And there we see some of the blood vessels that have formed at the core and the glandular tissue of the corpus luteum that is uh, going to primarily produce progesterone to maintain pregnancy. If pregnancy doesn't ensue, recall the corpus luteum is then going to degenerate into a smaller uh, mass of scar tissue known as the corpus albicans, albicans meaning uh, referring to its white color as opposed to its yellow color in the corpus luteum. And so that's pretty much all we can see on this model. A little bit disappointing that they did not show a secondary uh, follicle and they did not show a graphene or vesicular follicle, but it does show us uh, most of the follicular structures of the ovary. That's it for uh, today's video, and those are the only two models we have for this term. Take care, and we will communicate with email about the final.